Right then guys, it's PSL here and I'm here for the third episode in my Formula 1 2003 Reverse Grid Race series. Last time out we had the Malaysian Grand Prix and despite it on the surface being very different to the Australian Grand Prix, I still feel the same way towards it and that is the Malaysian Grand Prix, much like the Australian Grand Prix, was a race decided more by retirements than on track overtakes. Yeah sure, there were far more overtakes in the Malaysian Grand Prix than there were in the Australian Grand Prix. And actually, in Australia, I don't think you can really say that any driver overtook a lot of people, apart from Michael Schumacher. But then that point becomes null and void because Michael Schumacher retired from the Australian Grand Prix. But then he went on to win the Malaysian Grand Prix. The luckiest race win we're probably going to see this season because... And this is why I say the Malaysian Grand Prix was decided more so by retirements than by on-track overtakes. And that is because, ultimately, the drivers who should have finished first and second in the Malaysian Grand Prix both retired. Anyway, on to the Brazilian Grand Prix, the 2003 reverse grid Brazilian Grand Prix. If you don't know about the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix, then go and educate yourself because... It is one of the most legendary Formula 1 Grand Prix, certainly in the 21st century. So for that reason, I don't think this reverse grid Grand Prix is going to quite live up to the real life Brazilian Grand Prix. However, this is still a reverse grid Brazilian Grand Prix in wet conditions. And the last time we had one of those, Fernando Alonso driving for Minardi won the Grand Prix. So, that is something to look forward to. Speaking of Minardi, I do want to correct myself on a mistake I made in the previous episode because I said in the previous episode that Minardi are powered by Asia Tech engines. And they're not. In 2003, they weren't. You can understand my mistake though because in the game, Minardi are still labelled as KL Minardi Asia Tech when in reality they were European Minardi F1 and they were powered by Cosworth engines, much like Jaguar actually with Antonio Pizzonia in 4th place. Now one thing I didn't know, well I knew Jaguar were also powered by Cosworth engines, but one thing I didn't know is that Jaguar had the CR5 Cosworth engine, so the 5th model, and Minardi had the CR3, the third model, Cosworth engine. Minardi were two engine models back on Jaguar. Which is pretty much unimaginable in the context of modern day real life Formula 1. But, well, I think that difference in engine models does go some way to explaining why the Minardis are at the front of the field. And if you go right the way back to 18th place... Mark Webber in the other Jaguar is there. That means, because of course this is a reverse of the real life qualifying results, that means Mark Webber for the real life Brazilian Grand Prix qualified in third. But still, without further ado, let's head on into the 2003 reverse grid Brazilian Grand Prix. Well, they call this place Interlagos. It means between the lakes. And I think we've got a few additional lakes today. It's raining so hard and the race about to get underway. Go! Everybody rushing towards the center S's. Are they all going to get through safely? It's very, very tight on the turn in for this corner. Side by side they are. 
Well, thank you, James Allen. And coming out of the center S is Antonio Pizzonia is leading the Brazilian Grand Prix. And Cristiano de Mata is in second. It's a Brazilian 1-2 for this Brazilian Grand Prix. So it's Pizzonia, de Mata, Justin Wilson in third. Ralph Furman, for the time being, is in fourth. We'll keep a very close eye on him. Juan Pablo Montoya is in fifth. Nick Heifeld, sixth. Jos Verstappen in seventh. And through the mist... We can just about make out Jacques Villeneuve in 8th. Then you've got Olivier Panis. Heinz Howard Frensen in the Sauber is in 10th place. But there's also a Renault or Fernando Alonso who hasn't made the move. No, through the much slower Sector 2 section of the track. No, he hasn't been able to make that move stick. But let's move back up into the points places. So we've got Montoya all over the back of Ralph Furman as we're coming up towards the second, no, in fact, towards the last corner. Well, the last real corner because the next corner is flat out. Well, it is in dry conditions, but in these conditions, I don't know, going flat out would not be... That would take some bravery, it really would. In heavy rain conditions, I should point out this is heavy rain conditions because... Well, the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix was wild. I mean, Bridgestone brought intermediate tyres when they should have brought full wet, and it was a rolling start to the Grand Prix. That's how wet it was. Honestly, an extraordinary Grand Prix, and that has been reflected in the weather for this very Grand Prix. Ralph Furman still in fourth, Justin Wilson still in third, and we've got the two Brazilians who are extending out quite a nice lead, actually. Nick Heidfeld is in sixth, Jos Verstappen seventh, Jacques Villeneuve in eighth, and we have now got Michael Schumacher in ninth place. And we can't really... There you go. We can just about make out the all bright red Ferrari of Michael Schumacher. With Fernando Alonso now in tenth place. The thing is though, is we're in uncharted territory. Well, I'm in uncharted territory because... Well, actually, I think we might well see an overtake now around the outside, especially in wet conditions. Surely there is no way Montoya is going to make that move stick. Around the outside, no, surely. He's just got such a longer way to go. And he's still around the outside and still side by side with Ralph Furman. And Furman's going slowly. And the BMW power in the back of that Williams, I think, has allowed Juan Pablo Montoya to get into third place. That is exactly what has happened. So we got Montoya in third place and past Ralph Furman. No, sorry, in fourth place. Justin Wilson, of course, is still in third. I mean, I got confused because let's not forget the last Grand Prix, the Malaysian Grand Prix. I don't know what happened to Justin Wilson, but he started the Grand Prix, went into the first corner, and then never left the first corner. So I have no idea what happened there, and it baffled people in the comments as well. Michael Schumacher is up into 7th place. Let's see if we can get a replay on that. So on board with Michael Schumacher. I remember in the 2001 Reverse Grid Grand Prix, he did make quite a nice lunge into the first corner. That might even have been on Jos Verstappen, actually. Might... Oh, I really can't remember. But anyway, that was how Michael Schumacher did it. At the bottom of the centre S's, and there you go, Michael Schumacher up into 7th place. So, let's have a quick rundown of the order. There's Olivier Panis battling with the other Brazilian of Rubens Barrichello. But moving back up towards the front of the field. So, we've got Antonio Pizzonia in 1st place. Cristiano De Mata in 2nd. Justin Wilson in the Minardi in 3rd. Juan Pablo Montoya for Williams in 4th. Ralph Furman in 5th. Nick Heidfeld in 6th, Michael Schumacher in 7th, and Jos Verstappen, who's got a very, very busy and frantic task ahead of him because he is in 8th place with a lot of quick drivers behind him. Verstappen has got his hands full holding back Barry Keller. Ferrari's Michael Schumacher has just set the fastest lap. Jos Verstappen has just been passed by Rubens Barrichello. Barrichello really doesn't want to be passed by Jos Verstappen. Michael Schumacher has been making movements since I last looked, and are we even going to see a replay of this? No, we're not, because that's Michael Schumacher in fifth. He got past Ralph Furman. I don't know whether he got past Justin Wilson... In fact, Wilson has been passed by Montoya, so 
that's a shame. I mean, of course, with the very nature of this, I have to prioritise who I want to look at. In fact, there is Michael Schumacher. There he is getting past Justin Wilson. And there you go, up into fourth place. That's the thing with a reverse grid Grand Prix, because of course there's going to be overtakes going on all the time, so I just have to prioritise who I want to watch, and I was too busy watching Rubens Barrichello. We've still got all 20 people who started the Grand Prix still running, and we've still got two Brazilians up at the front. It would be nice to see at least one of these guys finish on the podium for their home Grand Prix, but they've got Montoya to contend with in fourth. Very soon, they're also going to have to contend with Michael Schumacher. Then you've got Wilson and Furman holding off Nick Heifeld, who himself is holding off Rubens Barrichello. And you've still got Jos Verstappen for the time being in ninth place, with Jacques Villeneuve still just about on the edge of the points positions. Behind him. To matter did everything he could to try and keep back Montoya and the two cars touch a definite coming together uh... yes yeah, a slight nudge from behind them they look okay so far though yeah they're both okay but I think De matter is not quite going to be so okay in a second because yeah sure he's still running despite there being contact and incredibly close racing but De matter it is an inevitability that he's going to fall down to fourth place being passed by both Michael Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya. So, this could be quite a good scrap for the race lead to watch out for for the next 19 laps between Montoya and Michael Schumacher. I'll be looking forward to that, but they have got to get past Antonio Pizzonia first. It's still Pizzonia, Montoya, Michael Schumacher, De Matta in their little group in the top four. Wilson is still in fifth. Ralph Furman still in sixth. Barrichello is in 7th, having passed Nick Heidfeld. And in fact, I think we are going to see an overtake. Yes, there you go. In fact, Barrichello's made that yeah, so much easier than Juan Pablo Montoya did. So there you go. Barrichello quite easily, comparatively anyway, up into 6th place. And it is just a matter of time before he gets past... Justin Wilson so in fact we could see another I think we could see both Ferraris on the podium this Grand Prix because Barrichello has made up incredible ground Barrichello started this Grand Prix in 20th in stone dead last he's in sixth already and surely he's going to pass Justin Wilson I'm expecting that to happen by the end of the lap Michael Schumacher's in when did this happen? When did Michael Schumacher get into first place? Well, he passed Juan Pablo Montoya. Oh, talk about the Michael Schumacher op -ness. This is ridiculous. But there you go, just a run down towards the third... Is that the third corner? Either way. I'm stunned. Right, this was something I missed out on, but I was able to catch it on the replay. So Barrichello actually making an overtake in Sector 2. And this is a part of the track where you wouldn't normally see overtakes. He's weaving around in heavy rain conditions. That's ballsy. In fact, I, I literally only just missed the overtake because, yeah, I mean, I started watching just a few seconds. It's going to loop back around now, isn't it? But either way, that is... Rubens Barrichello up into 5th place, past Justin Wilson. But Wilson's... no, I thought he was having a go there, but either way, the Cosworth engine has not got the power to contend with the Ferrari engine. And Barrichello in 5th place, let's have a look at this. So he is about to pass the start-finish line now. Dematter's there. And then there is Montoya, who is still trying to get past Pizzonia, and I think this is finally going to be the lap. So Montoya, he's got the inside line, he's got the BMW power, he just needs to get it slowed down for the corner and not crash into Pizzonia. Either way, wow, that is, that is still an overtake made by Montoya. So Juan Pablo Montoya is now in second place, but a good several seconds behind Michael Schumacher, and I don't see him really making up the places. Pizzonia third, De Matta fourth, and we're going to have to keep an eye on this camera because it's only a matter of time before 
Demata's rear wing is going to be filled with the image of Rubens Barrichello. Race was just set by Ferrari's Rubens Barrichello. Jordan's Ralph Berman is fighting for position with Justin Wilson. No, he's not. He's not, James Allen. I'm sorry. This is going to be a theme of this series, isn't it? Commentary errors from James Allen. But either way, Ralph Furman, he wasn't in a battle with Justin Wilson. He was, though, in a battle with the Scot of David Coulthard. And Coulthard has won out on that. So Coulthard is now in seventh place all over the back of Justin Wilson. So let's have a rundown of the, in fact, Barrichello's already caught up to Demata. So let's have a rundown of the race positions. Michael Schumacher is leading the Brazilian Grand Prix. Juan Pablo Montoya is in second. Then you've got Pitsonia. De Mata was in fourth. Make that now fifth as Rubens Barrichello has moved up into fourth place. In fact, I've just realised this is all of the Brazilian Grand Prix drivers in 2003. Pitsonia, De Mata and Barrichello. Oh, Pitsonia. He's lining up to try to make the pass. They're side by side now. Yes, he's passed. Great move. But can he hold on to this position? Or will the other driver get back past him? Do you know what? I didn't say anything there because I was wondering whether James Allen was going to carry the commentary on his own there because he got very exasperated when Barrichello and Pizzonia were side by side but they're not that excited when Barrichello actually solidified the move. So I'll say it since he didn't. Rubens Barrichello at his home Grand Prix is now in third place. So you've got Michael Schumacher leading miles ahead of the rest of the field including Montoya in the Williams who's He's so far behind, it's, it's actually kind of embarrassing. Barrichello in third, and is much closer to Montoya than I thought he would be. This could still be a Ferrari 1-2 yet. Pitsonia in fourth, De Matera in fifth, so it's still a Brazilian 3-4-5. David Coulthard is in sixth, Justin Wilson still in seventh, and Ralph Furman in eighth. These are the two guys I'm going to be keeping the closest eye on because there's no way Justin Wilson should still be in 7th. There is no way Ralph Furman should still be in 8th. Never mind still running. But we've done half the Grand Prix. And they're both in the points place. And they've both defended reasonably well to be honest. And if they can actually score points this Grand Prix. Then I'll be chuffed for them. Especially Ralph Furman who has had chronic reliability issues. And it would be nice to see him actually finish a Grand Prix, never mind score a point. Jordan's Ralph Furman will surely have a go and see if he can pass Wilson. David Coulthard has gone wide, but he's kept it all together. They are side by side now, and he goes through and gains a place. Thanks, Martin. So there you go. Coulthard has passed De Matta. Meanwhile, there you go. Kimi Raikkonen has passed Justin Wilson. Let's have a look at that since I did cut away from it. So you've got Kimi Raikkonen in eighth place. Justin Wilson, defenceless, to be honest. What can he really do? Because he's got the much quicker... To be fair, I mean, yeah, I did say what could he do. To be fair, he did about as much as he could. He went to the inside line, but then Raikkonen just stuck with it. <laughs> Look at Ralph Schumacher down in 16th. Wow, he's having a dreadful time this Grand Prix. But, uh, yeah, to be fair, Wilson did all he could, but ultimately he was competing against someone who's in a far superior car. Kimi Raikkonen is in 7th, Justin Wilson though is still in the points place. De Matta in 6th, David Coulthard 5th and it is only a matter of time before Coulthard 
is able to pass Antonio Pizzonia. Antonio Pizzonia really doesn't want to be passed by Coulthard. He's been hit from behind. Jaguars, Antonio Pizzonia. Tried hard, but in the end, he couldn't keep back. David Coulthard. McLaren's David Coulthard is doing his best to keep the other car behind him. I forgot Raikkonen was even in a points place, to be honest. He was nowhere near Demato. I swear, last time I looked, but there you go. That was... It almost seems like Demata just let Raikkonen pass because that, that was the easiest overtake we've seen all Grand Prix. So that was how Raikkonen got up into sixth place. And what's this? Oh, this is Ralph Furman still actually, still keeping back both Renaults. This is an incredible job. But there you go, Justin Wilson still in eighth place for Minardi. That's fantastic. And I wonder if someone's going to pass Ralph Furman. I don't know in any way, it wouldn't be immediately important anyway. But yes, Wilson in 8th, Demata, oh, in fact, we missed out on this, of course we did. I wonder, I, I, I just thought Raikkonen wouldn't be passing Pizzonia so soon after he passed Demata, but first corner, second corner, round along third corner where everyone crashed in the real life 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix, and there you go, Raikkonen kept it on track, and took fifth place. So that means all of the top team drivers, with the exception of Ralph Schumacher, who's still yeah, just playing about in 14th place. But apart from Ralph Schumacher, all of the drivers for the top three teams are in the top six places. It's Michael Schumacher, Montoya, Barrichello, Coulthard, then Raikkonen. And then of course you got the Brazilians of Pizzonia and Demata, and then finally, finally, Justin Wilson, who still amazingly, 19 laps gone, is still in 8th place. Right then, I believe Cristiano De Matta has retired from the Grand Prix, because I was cycling through the drivers, and he wasn't there. So, De Matta in 7th place, comfortably in the points place at his home Grand Prix. No, he did retire. Oh, that's so gutting. Cristiano De Matta with an engine failure at his home Grand Prix. And that is so typical of Brazilian driver luck. Well, typically, it was Rubens Barrichello who had bad luck at his home Grand Prix. And now we've got Cristiano De Matta, who is the first and so far only retirement in this Brazilian Grand Prix. So that means, I believe, actually... I think that means Ralph Furman might be back up into a points place, yes! Well, I think Ralph Furman's luck has changed because he is now back up into a points place. And if he can keep back Jarno Trulli, and I think he will, then Ralph Furman is going to score his first point this season. Furman is doing his best to keep the other car behind him. Oh no, that is so gutting for Ralph Furman. The second he got back up into a points place, he's lost it. Jarno Trulli has finally, finally passed Ralph Furman. And still Fernando Alonso hasn't. That's extraordinary. But Jarno Trulli is in the final points place and bearing down on Justin Wilson. Right, this is really bad. There's Justin Wilson in 8th place, no 7th place, sorry. Jarno Trulli, if you go back through all the drivers, eventually, there you go. You'll, you will get Michael Schumacher on his final lap and he's got traffic problems. This is extraordinary. I don't think we've ever seen this in a reverse grid video and that is the first place driver actually lapping other cars and these guys ahead haven't had reliability issues because if you want to include reliability issues and crashes and all sorts of stuff we have had lapsed drivers before but we've never had the first place driver had to carve his way through the field and the reason the field is so tightly bunched together still is because of course Justin Wilson and Ralph Furman were in tandem holding up the rest of the field I think Michael Schumacher is close to lapping his younger brother, but he isn't going to do it. 
But even still, what a dominant Grand Prix for Michael Schumacher as he wins the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix. A superb victory, fantastic result for him and the team, and a full 10 points for both in their respective championship campaigns. Let's head straight over now and join them for the podium celebration before we have a look at the full race results and the latest championship standings. Juan Pablo Montoya has held off Rubens Barrichello and will take second this Brazilian Grand Prix. Rubens Barrichello, a podium at his home Grand Prix and he started in 20th. He had the most positions to make up out of everyone and did it. So congratulations to Barrichello, I'm, I'm quite pleased about that actually. Cool fired in 4, Kimi Raikkonen in 5th, Pitsonia will come home in 6th. And then we've got Justin Wilson in 7th. Well let me just check, Pitsonia is actually going to cross the line, there you go. So we've got two Brazilians, two of the three Brazilians were able to finish their home Grand Prix. And Justin Wilson, he's just going to hold off now around the final corner. And Justin Wilson, I mean, he held up the field for so long that Michael Schumacher started lapping them. But Justin Wilson, 7th place. Fantastic defensive driving. So then, that was the reverse grid 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix. I had no idea what this Grand Prix was going to throw up because... Sure, it was a Brazilian Grand Prix, but it was a wet weather Grand Prix, so I had no idea how many overtakes we were going to see, because I would have expected this Grand Prix to have a lot of overtakes, but then let's not forget the wet Australian Grand Prix where nothing happened. And certainly the weather did impact the amount of overtakes that Grand Prix, but there were a lot of overtakes this Grand Prix. All of the drivers from the top three teams, apart from Ralf Schumacher, moved up towards the front. In fact, they finished in the top five positions. That just leaves Antonio Pizzonia, Justin Wilson and Jarno Trulli, who were the other three drivers to score points. And Ralph Furman, Ralph Furman actually finished a Grand Prix, so congratulations to him. So then, it's on to the Drivers' Championship standings, and Michael Schumacher is now comfortably leading the Drivers' Championship. I'll tell you what, even if Michael Schumacher ends up running away with the Championship, we could see a very good battle for second, because Raikkonen, Coulthard, Barrichello, they've all got the same amount of points. Juan Pablo Montoya is only 4 points back, Ralf Schumacher is only 6 points back. There's not all that much else to comment on in the Drivers' Championship. Justin Wilson overtook Jacques Villeneuve and he's on the same points total as Mark Webber and Fernando Alonso. Jarno Trulli is now tied on points with Giancarlo Fisichella and Antonio Pizzonia. He's now got three points to his name so congratulations to him and that still leaves Panis, Verstappen, Frentzen who all don't have points along with Nick Heidfeld who was incredibly close to scoring points this Grand Prix, and Ralph Furman, who was also very, very close. And actually, ironically, if other people had reliability issues, Ralph Furman would have scored a point this Grand Prix. In the Constructors' Championship, there is only one change, and that is that Ferrari have overtaken McLaren to lead the Constructors' Championship. That's it, that's literally the only change. Ferrari went from one point behind to six points ahead. That's it, Williams have gone up from 10 to 18 points but they're still a fair way behind to the top two of McLaren and Ferrari. Renault got a point, Jaguar got three, Minardi got one but it hasn't really made all that much difference to the Constructors' Championship. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode when we'll be watching the Reverse Grid San Marino Grand Prix around Imola. So, I'll see you guys then.